The year is 20 to 40 before the Common Era. King Pepi II had just declared war on his enemies. So he mastered his army and... Okay, cool. I'm sure King Pepi's story is an interesting one. But seriously, what was an army like in ancient Egypt? Hmm, that's actually a great question, but... Shut up, this is my channel. Anyway, my name is Sarah and welcome to The Mists of Time. We don't have a great deal of evidence concerning the military of the Old Kingdom of Egypt, so we must work with what little we know. The main evidence comes from the autobiography of Unas, also known as Wenny the Elder. Wenny was a man who rose from the royal administration and served as the judge in a nasty political scandal. Eventually, he became commander-in-chief of the army and gained a lot of prestige and respect. When King Pepi died and chaos descended upon the realm, he became governor of Upper Egypt. Not bad for someone who didn't come from royal blood, right? The story of Wenny's life was written upon his tomb, so the gods could judge him according to his deeds. He was someone who really mattered in the public administration and the army, so his story gives us great insights into the Egyptian military organization. All right. Let's imagine you are the king of Egypt. Your spies tell you a great enemy army is preparing to attack your borders. What are your options? The bulk of the ancient Egyptian army was its militia. The kingdom was divided into many provinces called Sipat, better known with their Greek name of Noms, which means districts. Each was ruled by an officer, a nomarch. He was a local governor with many different responsibilities. One of his duties toward the central authority was to master the levies in case of war. Let's say the threat is great, so you call for a general mobilization. As Wenny wrote in his autobiography, at one point he led many tens of thousands of soldiers. The soldiers were divided into battalions, but we are not sure what this word actually referred to. Was it a description of how a unit actually walked day by day? Or maybe it was just a way to describe a bunch of soldiers? We aren't sure about it, but it's quite likely that the number of soldiers in a battalion varied greatly. Anyway, you are now commanding a huge number of farmers. Doesn't seem like a force to be reckoned with, does it? Surely a pharaoh such as yourself could do better. Enter the Nubians. They were people from a region roughly corresponding to modern-day Sudan. The relations between Egypt and Nubia were very complex. The two nations traded on a regular basis, but things, you know, could often go from cold to hot in an instant. The Nubians were fierce warriors. That's why Nubian mercenaries are a constant in Egyptian history. Every time a pharaoh went to war, you can be sure that there were Nubians fighting for him, and they would be led by an officer who bore the title of caravan leader. From the biography of a man called Harkouf, we know caravan leaders were a combination of traders, explorers, diplomats, and military leaders too. We can easily imagine this man hiring mercenaries to defend their trading routes from bandits and robbers. Or maybe hiring the actual robbers yeah, protection racket has always been a thing. Anyway, these guards slowly became full-time soldiers, with keen eyes, accustomed to living in and roaming around the desert, and with a great deal of knowledge of both the Nubian and Egyptian culture. It's no wonder that, when a war flared up, they were rallied to fight for the pharaoh. So you, as king of Egypt, now have a second option. Nubian mercenaries. But notice something. In the autobiography of Wenny, not a single general is mentioned. The only professional figures are the caravan leaders. Is it possible that an army of many tens of thousands of soldiers had no officers? Come on, it's very unlikely. 
To have a functional army, you need people taking care of the supplies, issuing orders, leading smaller units on the battlefield, and administering discipline. Why doesn't Wenny mention them? I believe there are two reasons. First, he's describing his own deeds. He alone did this, he alone did that, and the Pharaoh loved him, blah, blah, blah. So it's not an actual description of how the pharaonic army worked. It's really more like a modern war movie. Let's say it's Black Hawk Down. What does this scene tell you about the guy that performs the vital duties of any modern army? I mean, the contractor that is sold they see in your tent. So we can imagine there were many specialists in the ancient Egyptian army whose existence no one recorded. But there's a second reason why only the caravan leaders are mentioned by Weni. Remember what I said about the bulk of the army? It was formed by levies from the various districts. The system had a huge disadvantage. The local lords owned what can be described as a private military force. In theory, they had to manage the local battalions for the pharaohs, but there were some delicate political equilibrium in the halls of power. And, spoiler alert, the old kingdom of Egypt fell exactly when the nomarchs became more assertive and started acting like kings. By not mentioning the local lords in his story, when he focused it on the centralized power of the king, whom he represented. But why include the caravan leaders too? Well, the Nubians were foreigners who had no real loyalty to Egypt. They were professional soldiers who didn't care about the or that local lord. Their only goals were to fight, get paid, and then go back home to their own business. But is it possible that you, as the king of Egypt, had only these two options? Seeing how dangerous it was to rely on just levies, there must have been something else. But no standing army of any kind has been mentioned by a single source. The unthinkable, a strong no more allying with Nubian caravan leaders to usurp the throne, actually happened with mercenaries even desecrating the royal tombs. Also, we know there were fortresses and castles defending the delta of the Nile and the dangerous frontier with Nubia. Who manned these castles? Armed farmers straight from the fields? It's quite unlikely. We know there was a man bearing the title overseer of the affairs of the fortresses. Maybe that was the old kingdom's standing army we know a man bore the title Overseer of Palace Youths and Recruits. It's quite likely these were household scars who had to be extremely well trained and armed in order to defend Pharaoh's life. Maybe someday we'll find a complete roster of a military unit, yielding deeper insights into the Egyptian army. But wait, wait, don't go away. I need to tell you something else. You know how, when we talk about an army, we imagine huge pitched battles. But soldiers, today as back then, also had many duties besides fighting, and it was particularly so in ancient Egypt. We know about an officer whose title was controller of the gangs and recruits. He was assigned to a very special mission that today generals would sell to politicians as a hybrid operation. A fancy way of saying an army was sent to the Sinai Peninsula, east of the Nile Valley. Even today, the Sinai Peninsula is quite a rough and rugged land. But it's rich in stones and minerals. For instance, yielding beautiful turquoise stones. The ancient Egyptians maintained no permanent settlements in the region that we know of, but instead they deployed temporary military expeditions when they wanted to extract new materials. Soldiers sent to the Sinai Peninsula thus had two tasks, defending the expedition and mining. Did the pharaohs really send the army to quarry stones? Exactly, and it was such a big deal, the warriors would carve commemorative petroglyphs proclaiming the pharaoh's great victory over the mountains. I mean, bloody battles for the survival of the kingdom are catchier, but I believe these expeditions were downright awesome. 
It was something like the Apollo program, but with desert nomads and pharaohs instead. All right, maybe it's not the most fitting comparison, but you get my drift. And that's more or less all we know about the armed forces of ancient Egypt. Subscribe, hit the bell, you know the drill. See you next time in the midst of time.